Bonjour tout le monde, welcome back to We in France, I'm Diane, and as a blogger and also a YouTuber in this living abroad space, I field a handful of advice-seeking emails each week that come from people like you looking to move to France. Now, I think it's great that people are doing their research and trying to get as many perspectives as possible before making such a huge life change, and I'm happy to help. Now, in these emails, there's a recurring theme, and it's that people severely underestimate what a major life change a move abroad can be. And in this video, I want to get right into four important things that people overlook when deciding to move to France. And I want to get right into my list in an effort to keep this intro short, but I'd love it if you're kind of engaged with this topic to stick around to the end for more context, just around what I'm talking about here and my point of view. And for a list of eight things, a full list of eight things, be sure to check out my linked blog post below because I go into more detail over on the blog. But let's kick it off with number one. Learning French takes dedication and patience. And one of the biggest misconceptions I hear about moving to France and, and learning French or any language is that you'll just pick up the language by living here. And I'm here to say it just doesn't work like that. Now, if that logic were true, every foreigner everywhere would speak the native language of the country they're living in pretty fluently, but that's not the case at all. You know, a beginner, they're not going to be fluent in French just by living in France. Now, of course, living in a French speaking country can help you get a leg up on the language. It could even get you conversational, but learning French to an advanced level takes a lot more than random chit chat and the osmosis of kind of hearing it just around you. You know, it's not osmosis. And when it comes to learning grammar, how to properly write French um, and all the nuances, you have to put in a bit more work. So prepare to put in that serious time learning the language. Start well before you intend to move, especially if you want to integrate and participate in French life with French people in their own language and start that as soon as possible. And I'm kicking my list off with this one because I found that people, including myself, seriously underestimate the amount of work, dedication, and patience that's needed to get to a comfortably fluent level of French. I underestimated the frustration of it all, truth be told. And even if you have an intermediate level, more or less on paper, before moving to France like I did, it might take a couple of years before you truly feel comfortable in day-to-day -day life, you know? Now, your mileage is gonna vary depending on your starting level. If you speak French at work, if you work, if you take lessons, if they're group, private, how much effort you're putting into it, if you're outgoing, how hard you are on yourself, and, and so many other factors. But I feel that not learning the language to a decent level, it's gonna severely limit your ability to integrate and fully enjoy French life. So start now. Okay, number two, French healthcare is not perfect. And I've talked about French pharmacies at length over on my blog and here on this channel. I even did a behind the scenes pharmacy video and I am a fan of so many aspects of the French healthcare system. You'll see foreigners, including me, rave about it online uh, and rightly so, you know, French healthcare has a lot going for it. And I think it's a system that a lot of us could learn from in the US. In fact, one of the main things that I love about French healthcare is that an accident or an emergency surgery it's not going to bankrupt you. In France, healthcare is a human right. It's not a privilege that's attached to your employment. But all of that said, French healthcare is far from perfect and it's not without its problems. Now, for the record, care in France, I find is generally excellent and French doctors are well-trained and just as capable as American doctors or capable doctors anywhere. But depending on where you live, number one, it can be really hard to get a quick appointment and even be accepted as a new patient in some areas. And I know this could be true in the US as well, okay? But I'm also pointing out that it could be the case in France. Now, I live in an area, not a rural one, might I add, that's dubbed a medical desert for some specialties, and it's not always easy to get a quick appointment. Now, people have also characterized French doctors, you know, we're generalizing here, but being less patient-friendly, a bit cold, standoffish and less collaborative than they're used to at home. I personally had several bad experiences as well as a bunch of good ones. And I talk about that here, but French hospitals might also look a little less modern looking than what you're used to. So all things to keep in mind. And one of the biggest ones is because it's a public system, doctors seem to be a little more hesitant to do tests or order scans unless it's absolutely necessary. You're kind of at the mercy of the doctor. So I feel like 
Also, patients don't seem to advocate for themselves here as much. The doctor is definitely in charge. I want to give you a quick example of that. So if you don't want to uh, go on here with French healthcare, skip ahead to this timestamp for the next point. But let me get into the story. So we have a nephew, a preteen nephew. He had a stomach ache on and off and his dad, my brother-in-law, brought him to the emergency room. Now this was in the Paris area and the ER doc wrote it off as just a stomach bug and didn't do anything like blood work or anything beyond just a physical exam before sending him home with aspirin. My brother-in-law asked the doctor if she could just please do an ultrasound. You know, she, he explained that it wasn't normal for his son to have a stomach ache like this for so long, or at the very least, you know, a blood test. And she declined and kind of condescendingly told him, you know, it's a public system, monsieur, you know, and if they did tests on every kid with a stomach ache, they'd never have time or money to do anything else, you know, and like shrugged it off. He was left kind of feeling defeated. And for the record, a blood test that cost about five euros, it would have shown something was wrong, but the doctor didn't want to do it. So to make a long story short, our nephew actually had appendicitis. It ended up getting infected due to the delay in care. So several weeks later, yeah, weeks later, he went on to have surgery and he spent, I think about 10 days in the hospital because it wasn't caught early enough to be a simple surgery. Now, let me point out, of course, this could happen anywhere. And I'm sure it does happen in places like the US. I agree with you. I'm not saying this only happens in France. Doctors miss stuff all the time. Time. But the point that I'm trying to make is this stuff happens in France too. Also, malpractice cases aren't really a thing in France. Doctors do not fear being sued for millions of dollars. Bottom line, it's a vastly different system here, and it's really important to be aware of the differences. Okay, number three, there are extreme politics in France as well. So while the political scene here doesn't match the American one, there still is a political scene. So you're gonna find people at the far left, far right with nationalistic views and everything in between okay politicians ugly behavior makes the news here in france as well and if you're not familiar with the french election i have a video on that but there are no fewer than 12 candidates every time there's a presidential election there's a far left party called la france insoumise and a communist party called la parti communiste Français. and people's political views are diverse now that said I feel that one's political views in France, they don't seem to shape people's identities as much in France. And you definitely won't see as many bumper stickers on cars in support of one candidate or another. You won't see profane lawn signs or decorations or really much political decoration at all on people's properties. Anyway, I, I don't wanna to go too far down that rabbit hole here because politics, it's not the big point here of my channel, but I just wanna make you aware that that exists. Okay, number four, the tax burden in France. Now, you hear people say time and time again that the French pay high taxes. And yes, it's true. If you live in France, you will pay income tax. If you're self-employed, you're gonna pay your self-employment uh, contribution. You're gonna pay a CFE tax, the Contribution Foncière des Entreprises. If you own a business, uh, then you have property tax, possibly inheritance tax. And taxes in France might be a little bit of a shock. Now, regarding income tax, um, you pay a personal progressive income tax on your worldwide income, uh, uh, not just what you earn in France from French people or French companies, and you file jointly as a household. There's no option to, to file separately as a married couple, and the more kids you have, generally the less you pay. Now, if you're employed in France, the social charges, which go toward the social security system, that's not to be confused with income taxes, which are separate, they come out of your pay on the back end, and they might be a little bit of a surprise what you're actually left with in terms of pay every month and your paycheck. Now, if you're a particularly high earner, um, you pay a supplemental tax as a way to help curb the, the budget deficit. So if you're a single person and you earn between 250 and 500,000 euros a year, I believe that extra tax is 3% on your total income. Now keep in mind a salary like that would be extremely, extremely rare. And French salaries are much lower than comparable American ones. The salaries in and of themselves, they're a bit of a culture shock. So be aware of that if you plan to work in France. Now, all that said, for paying into the system, you do get a lot in return. You have healthcare, uh, you have unemployment pay, you have housing assistance if needed, you have all kinds of parental benefits, and that's just for starters. So personally speaking, even as a self-employed person with no kids, despite paying a hefty chunk of taxes and social charges, I do think the quality of life in France is worth it. And I personally feel, again, that paying into the system for the greater good, it's a concept I'm okay with. Okay, now for some context uh, regarding where I'm coming from here. 
there. I have a lot more to say on this, and like I said, I didn't want to belabor my intro, but stick with me. I think it's really easy to focus on the fun and exciting aspects of, of planning a move to France, but I think it's equally as important to spend time researching let's say the less glamorous sides of a move, the, the things that might give you trouble. And just first about the fun parts, you don't have to look too far online to find content from people who love living in France. I'm one of them. And you could look at the videos here on my channel, you know, where I tell you all about like amazing French habits and little things I love, amazing places like Le Mont Saint-Michel and so much more. I do things like that often and I enjoy sharing the beautiful parts of France with you. I, to be clear, I, I wouldn't still be in France if that were not the case, but I feel that there is a lot less content out there about the harder aspects of life abroad. So if you're thinking about moving or you're just curious, I hope you're getting something from this video. I just feel like there are fewer people out there pointing out the very realistic hurdles one might face, you know, and it's so important to talk about these tough parts of living in France. And I'd be doing you a major disservice if I just kind of brush that all under the rug, you know, focusing only on the amazing parts of life in France, they're not going to prepare you for the more challenging aspects. So I hope that what I'm talking about here might open your eyes to either something you haven't considered or is at least a reminder to continue researching. And if you're new here, again, my goal here on We in France and over on the blog, it's not to convince you to move to France or to sell you a fairy tale. That's not what I'm about. It's not the purpose of my blog or channel. I definitely don't work for a tourism board. I'm not a travel agent and I find it refreshing to be able to speak freely about the good and the bad. And what I am here to do is to honestly share my experiences over the past decade of living in France in the hopes that maybe it'll help you in some way, maybe to, to help you prepare, to, to make your France vacation a bit better, to give you more knowledge um, about what it's like here and encourage you to go after what you want in some way and maybe, maybe open your eyes to a perspective that you, you haven't considered before. To be honest with you, it boggles my mind when people write to tell me how they're planning their move to France, but they've never even set foot in the country or they went to Paris once on a vacation and now they're moving and they're putting all the pieces together. It tells me that people fall in love with the idea of France, but don't actually have any firsthand experience on what living here might actually be like. And that's where research becomes really, really important. And I hope this video gives you food for thought. Something that I wholeheartedly believe if researching your move to France feels easy, and you're not having any doubts, you're doing it wrong. Now, for the record, it's normal to have doubts. That doesn't mean moving to France is the wrong choice. Just make sure you're putting in the work before taking the leap, learning about the hard parts. They shouldn't make you any less excited, just more aware and more prepared. And as I tell you all the time, real life in France, it's very different from vacationing in France. Nothing about moving to France should be taken lightly. And I think it's important to ask yourself questions like, what do you want out of life in France? What are you looking for or trying to get away from? And truth be told, again, I flat out told people on multiple occasions that they could find what they're looking for by moving to another American state instead of uprooting their entire lives to France with a lot less hassle, you know, and they're going to find probably a bit more red tape and frustration than a move across their own country. Now, to be clear, none of this is to discourage you, just the opposite. This video is to encourage you to seek out diverse opinions of what life can be like in France and to encourage you to spend as much time here as you continue to plan or at the very least, again, open your eyes to some topics you haven't considered. And I hope you can learn from things I've gone through, my experience. I think it's really important that we remember we're all going to have different experiences living abroad depending on on a whole host of factors. A couple moving to rural France at retirement age who's financially stable and won't be working will need vastly different advice than someone who maybe is already fluent in French, wants to move to Paris at age 25 and integrate and build a life and a career for themselves. Anyway, I, I just wanted to share my thoughts. Um, I think this is a huge nuanced topic and a short video is not gonna do it justice. There's just way too many variables that play into why someone would consider a move to France and the steps they take to get there. So yeah, a reminder again to head over to the blog post linked below. I go over eight things, not just the four I discussed here, just on this topic and I'll leave it there. I'm gonna turn it over to you, see what your thoughts are. As always, thank you for being here and I'll see you back on We in France soon. Salut.